you talking about BTG? Fuck you talking about? <laughs> fuck you talking about? Go city drilling on my enemies. Fuck you talking about? Fuck that club. Fuck that club. J-Town where you know we do it. All right, all right. JTBG and this shit. Fuck you talking about? Bitch, what up? Terrence Green was murdered during summer break, July 2009. But more than a month later, when kids came back to school, the grief over his death, it was still flooding from the neighborhood into Harper. It was the largest fallout of a student death I had ever seen before. You know, even the boys, like, couldn't hold back their tears. Crystal Smith, one of the school's social workers. In some ways, she says that wasn't so surprising. Terrence was popular and charming and funny, but she was still not expecting what she saw next. I started seeing this, you know, TGC, TGC, TGC everywhere. Like, whether it be I was seeing it on book bags or tattooed on the kids, and I was like, you know, what is that? And they were like, oh, you know, this is, you know, the, the Terrence Green crew. The mythology around Terrence and the devotion to him it's intense. Kids who knew Terrence use his last name, Green, in place of their own. This was confusing at first when I met several of his friends who told me their last name was Green. But the most troubling example of Terrence's legacy was this series of videos made by kids. What up? The footage is choppy and grainy, like it's shot on a cell phone. It's of about a dozen kids walking around the street at night. They range in age from maybe 9 or 10 to early high school. Here, they're threatening and taunting a rival gang, S-Dub, which is also called the Dub. It's the gang that's widely believed by students, Harper staff, and police to have killed Terrence. For the rest of my life, I'm screaming, fuck the Dub! Fuck the Dub! Fuck the Dub! Toward the end of the video, one particular kid appears. He looks like he's barely out of middle school, somewhere between 12 and 14. In his right hand is a gun, a semi-automatic. He points it at the camera. He shouts hate at opposing gangs. He praises the territory he says he's protecting. Terrence Green City. No shirt showing tattoos. Go chain, I let it hang. Act lame, your brain saying that burner, I let it bang. You can take me out the streets, but you can't take the streets from me. J. Cole, cold world, so I keep that heat on me. Ask around, they know what's up. Street cred on my resume. Every time the feds ask me, you know that I'll never say. All blue, never gray, I'm G'd up like every day. Boy, I let that semi spray. Better ask around, I'll never play. Mom never paid attention. Daddy on this game till while I was young, just watching. Trying to do the same shit. They was hating me, but now I'm only got faith in me. That Asian kid killing any beat without a label, they label me. Asian Americans are among the best educated groups in the country, with 50% of adults holding a bachelor's degree or higher, compared to 29% of Americans overall. But statistics can be misleading. The category of Asian American includes over 24 different ethnic groups, and a startling number of Southeast Asian Americans haven't received a high school diploma. Behind every number, there's a story. Yes. Um, I'm sure that your uh, statement or finding that children are not shaped by parents as much as they are by genes, culture, and the chance uh, surprised many. Um, and, but I would like to know what study or studies did you use to support that statement mm -hmm. and also um, what or how it was measured and where they were conducted? Yes. There's a, by now a large number of studies from behavior geneticists. Most people hear about these studies because they um, remember the findings that, that there is some statistical genetic influence on, on behavior, such as the fact that twins separated at birth uh, are, uh, are highly similar. But those same studies try to see whether growing up in a given home has a lasting effect. And often to the shock of the researchers themselves, who are sure, since 
let's say the effect of the genes is uh, 40 to 50 percent of the variation in a particular sample. What everyone expected would be that the other 50 to 60 percent would come from the home, from growing up in the same home. So that, say, adopted siblings growing up in the same home should be much more similar than randomly selected pairs of people. And in study after study, uh, done in numerous countries, United States, Scandinavia, um, uh, Western Europe, time and again the results came out to be 0 to 10 percent of the variation being attributed to uh, a given family. So the, there are two sets of studies that uh, use different techniques but have the same conclusion, namely SIBs separated at birth are no more um, sorry, no less similar than SIBs brought up together, and adopted siblings are not similar at all. Corroborating that, there are a number of studies of, um, that look at parenting in other ways that I think also uh, are consistent with this finding. And, and the, the person who really deserves credit for summing it up is Judith Rich Harris in her book, The Nurture Assumption. She also points out that studies that compare different kids growing up in very different circumstances only children versus children with siblings, kids who uh, spend a lot of time in daycare versus those with stay-at-home moms, kids with two lesbian mothers versus one of each sex, uh, kids who grow up in a hippie commune as opposed to a kind of leave it to beaver home. Uh, in all of those cases, the effects are pretty close to zero. Um, so that's a whole set of corroborations of what the behavioral geneticists tell us about the long-term effects of parenting. Then on top of that, if you, here's some, just sort of a common sense observation that I think is very robust. If you look at immigration, if you look at cases where kids grow up in one culture and their parents come from another culture, how do, what, how do the kids end up? Take accent uh, as, the, uh, as a salient example. The answer is in virtually every case, kids grow up with the accent of their peers not the accent of their parents, and not even something that's halfway in between the accent of their peers and their parents. Likewise with styles of dress, tastes in music, and so on. So the upshot of these studies is not by no means that genes are everything, because they show conclusively the genes generally don't account for more than half of the variance. Now it's a lot more than zero, it's a lot less than 100 percent. What it suggests is that culture matters, uh, that is not the individual parents, but the surrounding peer culture, and, to, uh, and probably also the chance matters. Excuse me, just uh, an yeah. addition here is that it seems to me that, I, I mean, that's why I ask what was actually measured, because if you measure a, in a behavioral way, like how they walk, how they dress, et cetera, et cetera, then definitely, I mean, parents do not have to have a certain strong role in that. However, if you measure a value system that is actually underneath our skin, some, I mean, it's somewhere in there. It's not really that visible. And it's not as easy to measure it. Yeah. And, uh, and it kind of operates our behavior kind of down the line. Yeah. Um, then th this is kind of where I'm a little bit just, you know, curious whether they were measuring just, you know, how they dress, how they talk, what they do in an elevator, as you yes. said, or, <laughs> right. or um, you know, or they actually measured a value system into, to... Well, here's some things, here's some of the things they, they um, did measure that are at least indirectly relevant to the value system. One of it is, um, what they do most often is give tests of personality, and these are batteries that, that you may have many of you may have filled out where you uh, do a checklist of 550 statements that are then, uh, the numbers are then crunched and they indicate um, you know, more or less reliably how conscientious someone is, that is whether they attend to, or if they're responsible and attend to details or whether they're more sloppy and irresponsible, uh, how um, agreeable versus antagonistic they are, that is do they basically sort of like people uh, or are they basically hostile to other people. Uh, whether they're neurotic or self-confident, introverted, extroverted. So these are some of the things that are um, where you can't measure an effect of uh, the, the home and family. Also, there's some concrete cut and dried behavioral statistics that, that fall under this generalization. Likelihood of getting divorced, um, likelihood of getting into trouble with the law, which um, is, uh, again, not 
um, shows an environmental effect of neighborhood sometimes, but not one of, uh, typically one of parents. Um, number of cigarettes smoked, uh, number of hours of television watched. The generalization is just about anything you measure uh, shows uh, an effect of genes that's greater than zero, less than 100%, an effect of parenting that is small, zero to 10%, an effect of something else, presumably culture and chance, that is about 50% of the variation. Thank you. Um, likelihood of getting into trouble with the law, which um, is, uh, again, not, um, shows an environmental effect of neighborhood sometimes, but not one of, uh, typically one of parents. Um, likelihood of getting into trouble with the law, which um, is, uh, again, not, um, shows an environmental effect of neighborhood sometimes, but not one of, uh, typically one of parents. I'm free to look as, as an outsider at what the establishment has been producing and saying, hey, you guys, you've been following your old noses too long. She says look at your own evidence with new eyes. Take twin studies. Here are Debbie Melman and Sharon Posette, separated at birth, adopted, and raised by two different sets of parents in two separate households. Reunited just a couple of years ago, they turned out well, hard to tell apart. You're standing here, and you're there. Yeah, you're there. But and your voice you know is coming out there because you're else. here. Twins who are split up are just as similar in personality as twins who are reared together. And that can't really be explained by the idea that the home environment is what, you know, makes you turn out the way you are. What does determine what sort of adult you'll be? Well, that's a very good question. Part of the answer is genes. We've always known that. But the question is what besides genes makes people turn out the way they do. Harris believes children are molded by the people they hang out with, the kids, the peer group. Oh my God, you're 300. I believe that human beings are designed by evolution to adapt to a group and to become a accepted and valuable member of a group. And that this is the child's goal almost from the beginning. What they have to do is to look for a group of people that are like themselves, figure out how that group of people acts, and a child tries to adapt his or her behavior to the behavior of the group. Harris says this adaptation is evident in immigrant families. The Jaws came from China 12 years ago, but mom and dad haven't been able to master any English. Not so the children. Harris says they don't just speak the language, they do it with barely the trace of an accent. And that proves that children adapt to the group. One of the most influential linguists in this country agrees with her. Chairman of psychology at MIT, Steven Pinker. Kids are acutely sensitive to the fine nuances of what other kids are saying and the way their parents talk makes no difference. Pinker regards the Harris book as a turning point in the history of psychology. What Harris is simply saying is get rid of the illusion that you can mold your child like silly putty, that how you treat your child is going to determine the kind of grown-up they become. Harris hit upon her theory almost by accident, reading a study about adolescents who commit minor crimes, which concluded that youngsters acted out because they were trying to be like adults. And I said, wait a minute, teenagers aren't doing these stupid things because they want to be like adults. If they wanted to be like adults, they'd be doing boring things like figuring out their taxes or sorting the laundry. They're trying to show that they can thumb their nose at, at adult customs and rules. And that gave me the idea that teenagers identified with a group called teenagers. Free on my bros in the pen. Pray every night for my sins. Repent. Same man hop in the bins. My demon, he ride with me shoddy. Been scheming since we was just shoddy. Ain't too many left on my table. Let's stand no clip, hang out the pocket like cables. 